it's that time again. Welcome to the show. Hello and welcome to the Big Scoop podcast. It's big because... I'm Becky. And I'm Ian. And I'm Gemma. And together we make up the... Big Scuba Podcast. So thank you very much for coming back to us for episode three. In the last episode, if you uh, downloaded that one, we briefly discussed the warming up of the Arctic Circle and how uh, what's going on there. Uh, disabled divers and also some of the equipment, somebody like Gemma, who's now starting her open water journey. Uh, what sort of equipment is uh, maybe the best to go for? Yep. And that sort of things that we touched touched on. Um, coming up in this episode we've got Becky talking to us about the dolphins at SeaWorld. Gemma's got some news on plastic in the Mariana Trench. Uh, an update for Mares and their packaging. We've also got an email come in from one of our listeners. The very Yay, first one. Yay. <laughs> we, we've got some <laughs> we've got an email which is really good and also uh, we're going to go through some uh, download figures and also the Go Diving show that we all went to a couple of weeks ago so with no further ado let's crack on with some news Becky what's going on with the dolphins at SeaWorld ah it's not just the dolphins though no 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 so originally I found that there was this new California bill that seeks to ban SeaWorld from using whales and dolphins and actually banning them from breeding them in captivity for entertainment and performance purposes also on the side of that that SeaWorld trainers are now no longer allowed to ride the dolphins at the parks how do you mean ride them before when you go to SeaWorld you would have the dolphin show Okay. I've only been once. They would show, you know, the the capabilities of the dolphins, and sometimes the trainers, the dolphin trainers, would ride on the back of the dolphins or the whales and stand on them sometimes. Really? And it's got to the point now where actually SeaWorld is no longer allowed to do that. That's so good, it's I, absolutely amazing. I saw something about uh, where the must be the trainers were standing on the noses of dolphins or, or standing painful. on their face. Yeah. So like so that. what it is is. is kind of they launch the the trainer out the water yeah to show how strong they are to propel they actually launch the trainer out of the water by using their noses but actually quite a lot of them are you know again it's kind of the damage when you think about it yeah it used um, to be popular like you used to see so let's TV. get this right mm. so you go to see a show and you're watching a human being riding about on the nose or on the face of a dolphin or on the back and when, you, just, they when, you, when you actually think about it you think well is that should you really be riding about on the face of a dolphin no so well actually with the killer whales um well, they were doing that with the killer whales and really? quite a lot of trainers have either been injured or actually i think maybe one has actually died someone has, someone's been killed yeah because, it was in the news you know, quite recently the, the killer so whales actually them. just think about that you know that they're gonna so they're gonna say right no more we're gonna be standing on the faces of animals good it should have it should have happened years ago. Why has it, why has it took so long to work that way? I know. Out? Obviously, we you know as as a generation we're becoming more you know environmentally involved. We're understanding about starting to finally understand about protecting these 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 yeah. creatures and these animals and mammals. But still, I mean, as a child, what I wanted to be when I grew up was a dolphin trainer. If you'd ever said Did to you? me, yeah, you didn't want to be an astronaut, please, woman. No, woman. no, no. I wanted to be a dolphin trainer. I wanted okay. to be a marine biologist and a dolphin trainer. Yeah, well, marine yeah. biologist is... And I'm good, so glad I good, didn't become one. Marine biologist, into. yes, but dolphin trainer, no. Yeah. What did you want to be when you grew up? An accountant. <laughs> really? Do you know what She loves her spreadsheets. She Everybody, does. She loves I'm her not, spreadsheets. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm not surprised in this life. Gemma too. loves a spreadsheet. Yeah, I still do. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, okay, very much. I, I can't say anything to that. You know, I hate math. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, Excel, you know, does it for me. So, you know, with the formulas, you can do cool. everything with the spreadsheet. Yeah. I, I do get excited about some formulas. So, you know, excellent. But yeah, on that note, that's the end of my news. News. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on swiftly to Gemma. Now, Gemma, you what? You got to tell us about some plastic. Well, they found a new species right. this week down in the Mariana Trench. Right. So incredibly. Oh, it's so not plastic. It was a new species. Yes, but they found plastic inside it. Actually, what inside so what, it? Yeah. What, what is the species? What, what is it's it? It's some amph- amph- 
pod. Oh. So when you look at it, it's kind of like a little. Well, I think it sort so, of looks like a so what we need to do is put that on we can social push a media. Picture. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. And they've named it actually with a plastic, an element of a plastic name. It's called Eurothenes Plasticus. Oh, really? My yeah. word. To make and highlight to us all that plastic is a severe problem. Because the Mariana Trench is something like oh, seven miles here. down or it, something. It is. Its maximum known depth is over ten kilometres, almost eleven kilometres, which is thirty-six thousand feet. So incredibly, wow. incredibly deep. If Mount Everest was placed into the trench at this point, its peak would still be over two kilometres underwater. Wow. Jeez. So yeah, there's fact. And the plastic. <laughs> that's seriously deep. That's just yeah. So horrifying. they found tiny pieces of plastic plastic debris microplastics in the body so when did they go down there they it was quite re- there. it was quite recently that found this new species yeah but it's pretty shocking um it was actually a newcastle uh, team from the uk hey, hey, well yeah. done guys yeah. yeah they've done quite a lot of work in the mariana trench um but yeah it's common throughout the world all this plastic debris very shocking. There's quite a lot of facts about the amount of plastic. I think it's something I like... I think we first went down there in the 60s, I believe. Was yeah, it Jack the, the guy went... Yes, yeah, and a guy went down in submersible. I like. just pulled that out of the hat. <laughs> you didn't Google it? No, no, didn't Google it. No. I'm checking his screen. No, 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 he yeah, didn't Google 2009, it. 2009, yeah, they found this trench, but this oceanographer um, recorded these depths. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a... That's just crazy, really. Yeah, really the first crazy. dive to the bottom took place in the 1960s by the US oh, Navy. If I remember wow. right, they went down a, a titanium. I was going to say to you, what was it that they something. actually were in to, well, to get down there? The pressures are so immense. I think it's only titanium that can hold yeah. it or something like that. Yeah, I mean, the pressures are astronomical. Could you imagine how expensive that would have been to make? Oh, yeah, yeah. But there's only, you know, even nuclear submarines and stuff well, yeah, like that can't. Yeah go down that far so and yeah. I didn't realize till recently uh, we had somebody come on uh, as last year when we were teaching them to dive they were for the Royal Navy yeah. and um, and I find that quite interesting when you know we talk to some some of the students about what they do and, and one of her jobs was actually to so scan the seabed so when they send out like a, a submarine they'll, they're up to date with their maps and all this sort of stuff because mm. some parts of the world they'll you know they'll get silted up and stuff like mm. that and, yeah, of course, yeah. and you can only send a submarine to certain parts of the war which has already been charted mm. you can't just send a submarine out into the depths oh, yeah. whereas I know <laughs> just go wherever you want yeah. Yeah, we're, we're taking a detour boys <laughs> yeah, stuff like that yeah. but a sideline to this little story I found I did a little bit of digging and you taught, we're talking about the depths. On the other side... You're going to the heights The now, heights. <laughs> just this week, uh, they found pa- plastic pollution. Microplastics have been found on the top of Snowdon. So for anyone who don't know the UK particularly well, Snowdon is um, the highest mountain, I believe. Peak. Yeah. The mount, highest peak in Wales. And there's a little lake on there. And while the, the scientists are up there, they did some tests and stuff like that in the water in this lake at the top of Snowdon and they found microplastics and thought microplastics up to anything up to five <sighs> mil then mm. the only way that could have got there is through the cycle of rain yeah yeah so and obviously the, it originated from the sea probably and obviously yeah. the yeah process yeah it was, it was yeah. amazing isn't it, really yeah um, yeah these crustaceans they've done other research down on in this trench and they're contaminated with 50 times more toxic chemicals and crabs that survive in heavily polluted rivers in China. Wow. So that's just the extent of how extraordinary these pollutants are. Mm. It's actually quite interesting, actually, that the, that's actually found by a lady who she was she swam 16 miles. Imagine that. She swam. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> 16 miles along the river Glaslin, <clears throat> which is near Snowdonia, Snowdonia, mm. Snowdonia to collect the water samples. Wow. Was she just just sixteen miles? She swam sixteen miles. She didn't want to drive or walk. <laughs> she just decided to swim. Would well, you think a bus would have been easier? Sampling yeah. all that way. Yeah, yeah. Really? but wow, that takes some doing, doesn't it? Wow, excellent. Oh, some good news. And also had a letter back. We've been in contact with Mares, and they've kindly replied. And our local dive centre, Crystal Seas, um, they've just had a delivery of some new masks and right. they're in this like recycled packaging. Yeah, they right. look amazing. Yeah. What's, the, what's the packaging called? Mare's Just Add Water. Oh, okay. Yeah, 
okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so obviously they're heavily into obviously recycling. So you add water and it what? Well, it would decompose. Yeah, it won't. It's not like plastic where it's going to be within the environment for ages and ages. So it's something that will just decompose. I think it was something like ninety days. I've seen something similar with coffee cup lids. I don't know if you guys have seen this now. Yeah. That's some car. Um, they come out in this sort of like a cardboardy type of material. Yeah. And as soon as it touches water, not initially, but after a little while, once it gets wet, it will start breaking down. Mm, yeah. Um, so yeah. this must be the same sort of stuff. Yeah, it's one hundred percent biodegradable in soil in ninety days or. Yeah, yeah, so it's not long, three months, isn't it? Can you yeah. imagine just like getting your new products and then putting it in your compost bin? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, but you've got to say well done to Marist, as I don't believe there's anyone else done anything like that. No, I've seen similar things with Fourth Element where they've got their ocean positive swimwear, which right. are made out of ghost nets, which obviously they've yeah. pulled in from the ocean. So, but, but nothing in terms of packaging. No, uh, equally, Mares, they do put things in corn bags, so they're 80% corn. Mm. It, obviously, it looks like plastic, but obviously it is recycled. This is going to be the way forward, and you will yeah. see, I think, maybe more and more of this sort of stuff where it kind of fills plastic and it's maybe made out of corn bags or mm. hemp, mm. Uh, all this sort of stuff, you know, and why not? This is the way we've got to go, you know, we've got I've to get away people from people like reusing um, wetsuit material um, into bags. Really? So, like, you know, you have the canvas bags. Yeah, yeah. I've seen drawstring wetsuit bags. Okay. Yeah, upcycling. Yeah. To be honest with you, I'm kind of all for that now. I've, I've literally been finding old products that I would normally put in the bin, like T-shirts and stuff, where a mm. moth's got at it. And I, I'm finding different so ways of patching it up. So, upcycling, we're going to... We could work. do anything. It doesn't have to be clothes. It can be wetsuit yeah. equipment. So, an old wetsuit you don't no longer need. You could cut it up we and could make cut a handbag. We could cut it up, sew it, <laughs> and even make a, um, a wetsuit bag. So, like, when you go diving, yeah. you can put all your wet gear in it. It's a good idea, isn't it? Rather than sticking it in the yeah. bin and stuff. And there might be another... listeners out there that do it or can tell us more about what they're doing there you go listeners yeah. if you've um, you know if you're listening in and you're 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 a fan of uh up- upcycling <laughs> he'll get it right out. in and uh, be interesting to hear what you ha- what you upcycle and you send know. us some pictures yeah yeah, yeah really no that great. would be great can, give me a load of ideas <laughs> and, uh, we can uh, share that with everyone else so that'd be really good talking about we can actually sort of lead on to our email that we've had in from our listener or have we yes we've had an email yeah yeah so it's all really good our first um email in from dakota cheyenne i hope i pronounced that right in washington oh hello USA. she wrote i'm a new open and water i'm a new open water diver who has been who's starting out to buy equipment in preparation for a trip to oregon in the usa in may i'd like some recommendation on gauges wetsuits and, and other uh, equipment and where to buy in the water is pretty cold in the pacific northwest and i've been told a seven mil to nine mil would be best i'm a college student who would like to keep my costs down but i'm willing to pay a little more for better quality equipment i'm also looking for a dive buddy for my trip as well well Sadly, we can't actually help <laughs> with the dive buddy, but no, you know, unfortunately, uh, we but can't. there might be other listeners here from a similar area who who might be able to say hi and, uh, and get, buddy up we, with you. We could put maybe put them in touch. So okay, so you're looking for a wetsuit. It's about seven nine mil or something like that. In this country, they're like we we normally dive with dry suits and stuff like that. Mm, don't we? Keep cozy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you're just in the same position. We just talked about this in episode two, didn't we? Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. As a new diver, or yeah. beginning to learn what equipment I need to get initially. And I think uh, I would go with something like, if she can do the seven mil, nine mil, keep the dives to about sort of 40 minutes mm-hmm. and have a rash, rash vest, get a good quality rash yeah, vest. Yeah, I did that in Fortaventura, so mine's seven mil. Yeah. And I actually had a rash vest and short underneath mine and I, I stayed Perhaps. quite toasty you could even you probably could even uh, look at into a dry suit mm. you know because depends how much they feel the cold it does yeah mm. and, that, and that is a personal thing you know so we all feel that differently don't we mm. do you yeah I get cold easily I hate the cold I am a warm climate kind of girl <laughs> in, like here you know in the summertime temp- sea temperature could probably get to about 
18, 20 yeah. degrees. I've got to, I've got to have and that kind of thermal padding. That's that's definitely for me. Yeah. Even just like in the winter at the moment, the the walk in the dog got so many thermals on just to keep nice and toasty. I'm literally mm-hmm. like a pig in a blanket. <laughs> it is, and, and I think it's covered. There's nothing worse being in the water and you within cold about five hands. minutes you're feeling really yeah, cold. Yeah, because There's, you're not then enjoying what you're actually you looking at. You're too busy focused on how cold your fingers are and yeah, that you can't yeah. feel yeah. your toes. It could stress you out and yeah. you could lose your concentration on your actual diving and your yeah, depth exactly. and air and stuff like that. So it's really important to make sure that the coat does actually get a, a good quality wetsuit and i'd probably go for maybe the thicker side if you feel the cold more mm. with a good you can get even like a fleecy type yeah uh, rash vest which is quite nice i've got one which i wore in the red sea and that that was quite nice but even this country you know when we talk about dry suits you can get away with a wetsuit in the summer you know if you sort of keeping your dives to sort of about 40 minutes not going particularly deep mm. if you're going much deeper then really you are into sort of dry suits or wear, yeah keep really. warm and keep safe um, if the water's sort of cold out there mm. and as far as getting a gauge i would recommend speak to your local dive center build up that relationship with your local dive center go speak to them see what they recommend and you know they, they'll help you with that there's main manufacturers mm. the apex mares aqualungs you you know the all the big brands they all make the, the very similar gauges and stuff mm. and um your yeah, local dive center will be able to point you in the right direction with who they start they're very much a basic thing really mm-hmm. yeah hopefully that's helped really <laughs> Thanks for tuning in today to listen to us and obviously downloading us. It's very much appreciated by the three of us. We would like to clarify that we are in no way affiliated with any agency or organisation and that also means all opinions expressed in this episode are our own. You are more than welcome to make comments about the show or if you have any suggestions on topics for future episodes, then do send us a message via social media platforms or email. If you'd like to follow us on social media, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at The Big Scuba and on Twitter, the underscore big underscore scuba. Check out our Facebook shop where we now have bespoke Big Scuba podcast hoodies for sale. And thank you to all those that have already placed their orders. Our email address is thebigscubapodcast at gmail.com and we will respond pretty promptly. And if you'd like to support us via Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash the big scuba podcast. Here you can make a monthly subscription and you'll benefit from behind the scene outtakes, some dive-a-ramas, information to follow on that soon, early releases of episodes and other big scuba merchandise and more and more. So any contributions are really appreciated by the three of us. So biggest thank you and we look forward to hearing from you all soon via social media, email or the Patreon site. Our music is kindly supplied by a local band to us called Telling Truths, and you can listen to them more via iTunes and Spotify. So talk about social media. Um, We have had an absolute fantastic response on all the social medias, the Facebooks, the Instagrams. Twitter. Twitter, yeah, Twitter and as well. Yeah. And I'm learning now the Twitter as well. Tweet, tweet. Yeah, I'm arriving at Twitter. Tweet for us, so, Ian. I know. <laughs> Just <laughs> absolute brilliant, you know. Uh, so thank you very much to everybody who's liked and shared, sent us messages. We've had quite a few messages from people, uh, including the email from Dakota as well. You know, it's really good. We really like it that, you you know, we try and make this podcast uh, an interactive system that we can, you know, it's all right, that's just chatting away about diving and stuff like that. But the other part of this is we need the audience participation yeah. that you write in and give some questions and stuff like that. You know, anything you, you want to talk about with the whole diving side of things, you know, use anything, us. Yeah, anything. you know, this is a this is a medium that you can use and let's Within make it. Within reasons, obviously. Of, of course. <laughs> diving related. Diving related. Yeah. 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 So um, you know, so thank you very much. We've also got our first patron who's joined the Mary Big Scuba Band. Thank you very much. John Everson in Pennsylvania. Thank you, John. Big up to you. Um, thank you very much. It's you know, really sort of uh, knocked us off our feet that only like so early on that you know we got our first support and, and we you know we really do appreciate that it just helps pay for some of the costs you know, you know with this podcast he's ordered two hoodies as well straight away yeah really yeah, that's bless really good. thank yeah. you very much you know, they'll be um, winging their way to the usa <laughs> <laughs> i like that how many times did you practice that, that? should be really soon <laughs> 
but it is you know we can't do this without your with your response and also your support and anyone can support us by joining the patreon site it's all all there where you can go find us a free way you can support us as well is that when you've listened to the podcast is that you do like share and subscribe hit that old button that'd be really great so what have we all been up to then Oh, he's looking at me, so I assume that that I means he wants me to go first. Becky. Building the website. Ooh. Oh, good. And how's that going? Are you there? Slow. No. Um, no, we, we are there. So it's thebigscubapodcast.com. Excellent. Brilliant. What else would it be? Okay. Um, obviously, we're there. There's information about us. We've got links to our social media page. So if you can't find us, we're there. Good, good. Um, and also links to our Patreon and to um, our podcast recordings as well. So, Brilliant. you know, everything's there. We do hope to have our shop um, live in the next few weeks. Okay, but if you're good. looking to buy one of our um, big hoodies... Um, please contact us via email first and we'll sort that out through because um, we've got hoodies and polo shirts yes we do and have yeah, we're going to be looking at hats as well like baseball, baseball caps, caps as or well, beanie hats as well quite Ooh, soon nice. some beanies I have signed up to my dry suit certification, so next month I will be completing my dry suit Good. with some other random person <laughs> that's also sitting to the right of um, me, Gemma. <laughs> and of course you've got the best dive master to help, to help you as well. So. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm super excited. I've been wanting to do my dry suit since qualified for open water. I was like yeah. literally going to my drive intru- diving instructor, right, okay dry suit um, unfortunately no one is as mad as me wanting to learn how to do dry suit in in december january in fact actually and the instructors don't want why is that because it's very 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 cold so in the uk <laughs> water temperatures are about uh, three degrees or obviously i'm slightly mad it's and probably about maybe 37 degrees fahrenheit for our american friends well we're there just hoping go. it warms up a chilly, bit chilly, chilly, chilly. well yeah. it, it, will, it will yes but obviously yeah. i'm an impatient person so obviously i wanted to It'll just go around. all yes. guns blazing so yes. um but on it's that doable, side but then, it is it is really quite tough no thing, yeah. I, I can i can only imagine yeah. obviously i've done my theory already so obviously now it's I've heading three towards degrees, the and that's enough. practical <laughs> and like we said i'm not exactly a cold loving type person so <laughs> <laughs> I'll be wearing how many thermal layers <laughs> when we're at Stony Cove. So, um, so yeah, but on that note, because right. we were talking the other day, we want to do kind of a feature, and it's a, a Challenge Becky feature. Challenge Becky. Challenge Becky. And right. it's, the whole reason is because when people look at me, they see, oh, she's got makeup, she's got her hair done, she likes doing her nails, she likes putting fake tan on. But you do. But I do. Okay. But I like scuba diving at the same time. Right. You know, and I love like to be challenged i like to go against the odds i like to prove people wrong or you know tell them and show them that i can do something so i want all of our listeners out there to write in message us facebook email give me your challenges and right. we will my my co-hosts not me <laughs> i have i've been told this already my co-host will select the challenge uh, for yeah, me. because, because, hats, you because I, I, you I'd, want... I'd probably pick the easier one however obviously i'm i'm i'm, I'm for this, I'm for this. I might protest a couple of times, but I will do them. No, there's no protesting. So, guys, <laughs> she wanted to go through the any ideas and pick them, and we said uh, no. If you're going to do this, it's a feature it, now. <laughs> yes, this needs to be in. So, yes. relying on you people, you know, uh, do write in with your challenges for Becky. Could be interesting, and this will be on our YouTube channel as well, so people can see what what we're doing. And we do like document. We, we we do we do want to keep a PG thirteen guys as well, so you know just just uh, throwing that out there already. It's not coming out this now. Um, this is it. But you know, um, obviously. You know, let's see. Let's see how that goes. Yeah. You know, I'm so, looking forward to. It. So I'm, I'm looking forward to your challenges. So all we need now, listeners, are your ideas for Becky's challenge. So I should look forward to uh, seeing what comes in. Yes. Yeah. Um. Also, obviously, as you guys probably may or may not have known, um, we went to the Go Dive show, which we'll speak about later. Yeah. Obviously, I was there. Obviously, in my 
BIG Scuba Podcast official capacity, Mm -hmm. but also as Ms. Scuba UK. So hello Mm -hmm. to everyone that saw me. I had quite a few messages saying, oh, we saw the Miss Scuba at the Go Dive show. You had your sash on. I did, yes, yes. Obviously, that's always mixed received, but I found it it was, yeah, yeah, mixed received. But I think it's when they see the girl behind the sash that they actually realise that it's more than just what it actually is. Um, You know, thank you guys. It was great to see you all. And really, that's kind of it for me. It's a busy couple of weeks, really, since we last here. What have you been up to, then? Uh, Right, well, okay, what have I been up to? So the last couple of weeks, I have been really, uh, because it's the closed season, I haven't been diving. It's just far too cold, as we said. So (laughs) I've spent all this time really working on the social media side of things, trying to get this podcast up and running. We've only got a matter of a few weeks before the season starts, so... The dry suit gear is all ready. Uh, it's ready to go. Airing that. It is. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to actually getting back in the water. It's been a it's been a few months since it was last in, so uh, looking forward to that. I could have gone two weeks ago, actually, just mm. after we recorded the last one, but having a cold uh, doesn't help. And no, last time you, you're I, suffering I dived, quite badly, I dived with a cold. I could only get to about ten meters tops. Oh, so, you poor thing. Yeah. Plus, you've got to be careful when you're coming back up. Yeah, of as course. Well. Yeah. So it's not good. You shouldn't really be diving with, with a cold. So mm. I was like, no, I'm going to leave that for the time mm-hmm. being. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that we've been looking at is because Gemma's doing your journey, aren't you? Yes, I'm on Becky, my open water qualification. Yeah. Yeah. Becky, you yeah. have your challenges now. Challenge, Becky. Yeah. <laughs> So we're going to do a little feature for your dive master. So <laughs> <laughs> yours truly, the dive master. We're we're the unsung heroes at the back, looking after the rear. Um, so Make of that as you if will. You've got, if you've got any any questions for your dive master, I'll try my best to answer them. And, um, we'll and again, we'll we'll say PG thirteen, guys. <laughs> Yeah, make it challenging. Yeah. Do we? Yes. Yes, for our younger audience, okay. please. Okay. <laughs> okay. But anyway, so any questions for your dive master, do write in and I'll do my best to. I'll try not to Google. Google us. I'll try yeah. not to. No, we can yeah. put you on the spot. Oh so, my gosh, yeah. we could. Yeah. yeah, that would be funny. So, uh, but anyway, so that would be another little feature for us. And, uh, and that's about it, really, for me. And Gemma, on to you. What have you been up to? Tell us more about your open water journey what's the latest the latest is i finished all my three sessions in the classroom nice doing, one doing awesome. the five well modules passed my final theory exam Yay. 92 well done. 92 <laughs> lovely lovely yeah. well done. <laughs> um i've done is that hard how, how did you get on with that so it was a bit nerve tell us a bit about the exam so, so the exam is based around all the five modules that we've studied right and it is multiple choice questions which makes it a bit easier does make it a bit easier but then the questions are written a bit yeah to make you think so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, took a time all right so i think my fellow um classroom mates were equally nervous jonathan leisha and emily but we all did pretty well well done well done guys yeah so i've done two pool sessions i've got another pool session next week obviously we've covered all different drills um skills in the water like yeah. flooded mask out of air scenarios as well so yeah. there'll be a bit more to it's do a lot that. to learn isn't there? yeah it's quite intense it's yeah, a steep, but, yeah. Uh, learning curve isn't there? yes yeah, but it's really enjoyable and i'm really glad that i've given it a go so, good well yes. done and then i've booked my dry suit orientation yeah so that's yeah. sorted yeah. Yeah. and me and Gemma are going to be doing that together yeah. that's yeah. going to be fun <laughs> <laughs> we'll be laughing yeah <laughs> And it's a good thing to do is to, is to you know, for anyone who uh, is listening, if they're looking to do their open water and they've been told about a dry suit speciality, mm-hmm. it's a good thing to do is to tag that on mm. on the back of your open water. And then you're ready to go. Because it's a, in the water as part of your uh, skills, it's mm-hmm. quite an easy one to do. Well, it's quite a simple one to do, I should say. You know, it's a good one you, to do is to tag it on to your open water. It's just a nice one to build in as your last dive or something like that to yeah. get that yeah. done. And it also, of course, that means, you know, you can go to a di- your local dive centre and hire a suit and all the kit and stuff like that yeah. and just go diving. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, so I've got my suit. weekend at Stony Cove all booked as well. So yeah. that's the end of April. Yeah. You're going to be my dive master. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I hope Becky should be coming along as well. Yeah, so I'll be yeah. tagging along behind. Yeah, yeah, so that will be a great opportunity. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I don't have any nerves like I did at the very beginning. So yeah, yeah but I'm sure good. it will be. Yeah, no, 
a nerve-wracking day jumping in the lake, <laughs> Stony <laughs> Cove, but equally yeah, we're, we're going to be prepared. You, what you've got to focus on, really, is, and, and, and you just have to think about what you've learned, your training, you know, you've, um, you've had some really good di- um, instructors. Yes. If you do have any, like... Uh, and anxieties and stuff like that the best thing is to do is not bottle it up talk about it yeah you know talk to your dive master mm-hmm. your instructor who you had and you know if there isn't the thing you're not sure of it is a busy weekend you know when you when you you got mm-hmm. those dives to get through over a course of a couple of days mm-hmm. the good thing about it when it's busy you no, got time. On no time to think you just get it is. On it. and yeah. i'll tell you once you get that first dive you're in and you kind of relax and, yeah, and the best yeah. thing to do is if you can relax on the surface before you go under just mm. take that time a few seconds to think right let the heart rate come down and mm-hmm. then right this time listen to your instructor what your instructor's telling you relax it relax. is you yeah, know yeah. and and then you get that first dive as that is done it's behind you the rest of them you just think oh brilliant you yeah know? yeah and it is and then once you get your open water you've got to think well you know, chances are you won't have to do those skills, you know, again, um, especially like taking your mask off yeah. and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And that, you know, that I, I know that's the skill that a lot of people have a hang up with, you know, especially mm-hmm. in cold water. Yeah, it's quite daunting, but obviously we can practice lots in the pool. Practice, so we're practice. Fully prepared. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instructors is, have been yeah. great, so it's been really good. It yeah, is, and, and it is. Yeah, yeah. And you'll get that first dive uh, done, and it's just brilliant. You'll be, honestly, you, you'll be looking at the fish, and you think, wow, this is great. You know, <laughs> what did I do this lake? before? Yeah. I know. And, and then all of out. a sudden, you'll be like, oh, I'm, I, I'm too low, or I'm too high, and you just sort my ear out. <laughs> it is, you know. And it, the, if anyone's listening, I, I would say to them, is think about the future. Just think, right? Well, oh, I've got this dive. I've got to do. It's also think about why, why am I diving? Why you, because you want to do these things and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm. You know, and diving leads on to all sorts of things. All sorts of adventures. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's brilliant. So um, it, you will. You'll t- you enjoy. You both will. Yeah. Be a good. Yeah. Be, be a good time. Yeah, I think it's been yeah a brilliant um, experience so far. Awesome. Good. So, and if anybody's got any questions about it. As a non-diver or just starting out like I am, I'm more than happy to share my experiences or try and answer your questions or well, if you've got any fears. Well, it's one of the things that we hope to do from this podcast, really, isn't it? Yeah. Is, you know, if, if we can encourage more people to take up the sport, you know, you, you're sharing how you feel and things mm. like that. Um, and especially if we can encourage more ladies to join because, yeah, you know, definitely. it's mm. a very still quite a male orientated mm-hmm. sport. You know, we do need more females to come and join the sport, especially if they're in couples and stuff like that. You know, you can, that's the thing you can enjoy, enjoy as a couple. Yeah. yeah, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to learn how to scuba dive was my partner, actually. Yeah. He's he's a scuba diver and he always just said to me, all these amazing places that we get to go and we can't actually go scuba and share diving together. Yeah, and yeah. share because you can't go. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. GoPros and things like that are all very good until you actually see them for yourself. Yeah, definitely. And I completely brilliant. agree on that one. Especially... Mm-hmm. You know, there's some really nice dives in the UK, but when you go abroad and, you know, you see some of these, like, sharks and mm. stuff like that, and whales, and mm-hmm. it's just got to be awesome. Yeah. So. yeah. A couple of weeks ago, we went to the Go Dive and Show near in the Midlands in the UK. That was a really good show. Totally enjoyed that. Did you guys enjoy that? That well, was really good fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah first was, experience right. of a dive show. It was it's a not, relaxed environment. It is, yeah. yeah. Well, it's diving. Yeah. Yeah, chilled and relaxed. We should have had waves in the background. Anyway, moving on. Yes. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> so, who's at the show? So, the main speakers there was Andy Torbett, Monty Halls, Steve Blacksall, and Miranda Crest of Not. <laughs> was it? Oh, God. I hope if she doesn't listen to this, I've probably ruined the I bet. I bet she's probably heard worse. She probably has, not Yeah. At least you gave it a go. Miranda. 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 Yeah, you see her on the one show. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Everybody so, knows. Uh, but we listened to Andy Torbett was one of them. Andy was talking about his recent work on the latest Bond show, yeah. uh, 007 yeah, that, film, yeah. um, No Time to Die. Um, He'd done a lot with some children's TV as well, hadn't he? Yeah. Sciencey programs. Yeah. 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 Which so great. that was quite good. I was quite interested in he. He was mentioned. I know it's not diving. And he was talking about his speed skydiving. Did you catch that? Where he was talking Pretty about fast. yeah, the wind amazing, rush, you know. And I tell you, <laughs> going back to diving, really, it just shows you how fit 
and fitness fits in with diving and things mm. like that. Yes, and you know, he looks and, a fit man, doesn't he? You know, it is. Uh, and um, so, oh, so he's fit then, is he? No wonder uh, Gemma's going red in the face. <laughs> she is, she is. Oh, oh okay. Well, thanks Gemma. for that, Gemma. Yes, bye. <laughs> yes. Everybody now know that Andy Talbot's fit, right. Okay. At least we've checked that one off. Yes, thanks for that, Gemma. Anyway, so moving on. So uh, Andy was also talking about his dive the Britannic. Um, it's 120 metres down. Um, it's, a, it's a very difficult dive to do. Um, and I believe it's only for tech divers and tech divers who've got close circuit oh. uh, rebreathers. Mm. So um, it's a very specialist dive. And it's a sister ship to the Titanic. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. if you look up YouTube, you can look up the the video that was done, the, f- the whole film about that dive, and Andy was in that. So, yeah, really brilliant. And also the 600 metre suit that he was wearing in a swimming pool. Yeah, he oh, looked that like was a that. cartoon character. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh, I love that. And he said that he, could, he couldn't even give it a test run. All he could do was, was he picking up children's toys in yes. that swimming pool? Yeah, yeah. I thought that was brilliant, yeah. but I felt so sorry for him for the fact that he could only use it in a, in a yeah. pool. <laughs> Uh, six, that this whole scene you could go down to 600 metres which is amazing, amazing. Yeah. you can think that Big Ben uh, the Houses of Parliament in the UK is 100 metres high mm. six times the height of that crazy yeah that's a long way down in it's putting your faith in technology put it, let's put it that way yeah definitely and also one of the other interesting things that um, Andy was talking about and especially which was, is very important in diving uh, especially as you're a tech diver is being organised and having a fail safe. So Andrew was talking about having like two sets of masks, um, a backup torch, mm, things mm. like that. So when you go dive and you've got these backups. Um, who else was there? Steve Baxall. Um, Sharkman. Sharkman, yeah. He was talking I loved about his those videos. TV work, wasn't he? In, yeah. in South Africa, um, close shades with great, great whites. And yeah. Yeah. How you can read uh, a great white is when it's likely to... Um, attack, attack yeah. because the shape it's fin. I was so fascinated with that. I yeah. really was. Yeah. I think as um, it's fascinating how they can read that, and it kind of makes sense. And you know. he was also talking about in Greenland, the oldest living shark, which dates back to two hundred and seventy yeah, years yeah. old. Yeah. I think there's a news item about that somewhere. We might be able to share that on the social media mm, side of things yeah. about that. Um, that's quite an interesting one. Uh, I was talking about threshers and also. Um, Steve was giving us a description about the close shave that he had because he was in South Africa feeding sharks and part of the TV show and he had a chainmail suit on. Weren't they measuring like how the shark the does bite the marks. bite? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, w- that, was, that was amazing. And how the ripples come back across their... Um, is it the gills? The gills. Yeah. What have you. Thanks for that. That's all right. And, uh, and one... Uh, shark come around from the side surprised he, him a little surprised bit surprised him mm. caught, and actually bit the food that he had in his hand what they were using as the in the experiment yeah didn't bite his hand but that caught his hand mm. and he was fighting trying to get the so hand, got dragged his hand and the shark took off and with took him. him with it <laughs> and Steve's a big guy and he's a big yeah, fit yeah. guy you know to to suddenly take him up like yeah. that and that's quite dangerous for a diver because you know obviously that can be a, a, a an uncontrolled ascent, yes, yeah, mm-hmm. which can be dangerous for a diver yeah. if you can't get your hand out. Although it starts off sort of maybe slightly amusing on camera, it can actually turn into something quite sinister. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. You know, he had a close shave there to mm-hmm. get his hand out, so uh, you know, well done with that. And, and it really kind of shows his experience as a diver really, to do yeah, that. It's and, incredibly, and yeah. really. Um, Personally, I think bravery. Keep it cool. Really, I mean. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we didn't get to listen to um, Monty's, did we? No, uh, no. I think Monty was on while we listened to another show and we were talking to some of our friends at um, Mara's. Um, but st- I believe Monty was talking about his family up at the Galapagos Islands. Yes, yeah, and that's on the TV at the moment. It's on the TV at the moment. Yeah. And Miranda... Um, she was helping with the hosting. Yeah, she like did some hosting actually. with the girls at Scuba, didn't she? Uh, Grace May and Inca were interviewed, some young girls. Yeah. yeah, sort of really out there to promote diving to 
yeah. obviously young women as well. Amazing, yeah, quite inspirational talk. That was really actually, good the girls story. at school mm. listening to their story and stuff like yeah. that. Right? I yeah. must admit, I, if I was so much younger and I heard that, it would have got me into scuba diving yeah. a lot quicker. Grace was only 17. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah an amazing. Yeah. Um, maybe, possibly, could we say a little scoop? Yes, yeah, we Poss- hope to be uh, interviewing Grace very sh- quite shortly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that'd be really good. So if you're listening, Grace, hello. Hello, Inca. <laughs> yes, hello. hello. hello, hello. <laughs> um, so that's really good. That was good to hear their story, and that'll be a uh, story that we hope to share with you soon. Okay, so that was this, some of the speakers. One of the other speakers I, li- I, I caught on um, uh, was quite interesting, was a lady was talking about um, some of the diving industry, um, diving injuries, and how they actually... Um, treat them through the, like the chambers, in the chambers yeah. so like the pul- pulmonary barotrauma injuries so it's like where the air bubbles get caught in the blood oh gosh yeah system <clears throat> and stuff like yeah, that yeah um, and how they treat that and things like that uh, so that was quite interesting I, quite technical stuff and i think that's obviously stuff that mm. she dumbed down for you know, for people to try and get the head. Well, to be honest with you, I kind sort of, of roughly off. understood what she said, so you know, yeah. obviously it did work. Yeah. <laughs> it got to something. Yeah. It, well, it was absolutely so fascinating, wasn't it? Like, re- it was research though that yeah. she was helping to conduct. So she, in yeah. effect, was a guinea pig. That's it. Because that was just phenomenal. How, how long? Do you remember how long she said she was in that? That deep like twenty-four pressure? hours at least, wasn't it? Because she yeah. slept in there as well, didn't yeah. she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, and yeah. It, this is where some of the diving, especially when it comes to technical diving and its depths, you know, still cutting edge technology mm. and the understanding these injuries and how we treat them, you know, it's all good stuff for the future. And if we find way of uh, treating people better and quicker, and hopefully that will, you know, bring up the healing process. We met up with our friends at Mares, didn't yep. we? Um, Hi guys. SSI, so yeah. hello to you guys. Yeah, saw some great equipment. Yeah, we did, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, yeah some, I, I, some I really was going nice shopping, but um, I've, I've been told <laughs> I need to put my purse away. So. <laughs> yeah, we've got some really great um, new lines coming out with BCDs yeah. and yeah. stuff like regulators, that. Regulators, there was a different one, wasn't yeah, there? New, yeah, a brand new yeah. regulator. Um, how that drops down from the bottom, so yes. you yeah. don't. doesn't matter what angle you have it. You know, you can just basically yeah. Because always there. when you have um when you have it coming from like is it the le- uh, which side? If, is sometimes it? if you have it come from the side, you can get a kink in the hose. Yeah, when you're like like turning that. your head and, and can, looking around, it feels a bit restrictive it, in a way, doesn't it? It can do on depending on the hose that mm. can feel a bit like that. Um, but this one comes from the bottom and it kind you've got a nice flow with the hose. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's kind of sort of you think well. Why didn't, think of that? why didn't we think of this earlier? You know. So, but anyway, you know, they, they have, and, and well done to them, really. Yeah, so yeah it's good. It's great. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, we met Miss Scuba International. Yeah, yes. my sister Cream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was Daisy, good. absolutely phenomenal girl. She really is. Um, she learnt to scuba dive via Miss Scuba, like mm-hmm. myself. Um, I believe she's a dive master now. So she she sounded, you know, qualified. she's yeah. not only is she. You know, she's one of those people that you absolutely love to hate because she's absolutely gorgeous and she's got a great personality and really lovely human being. Um, And she's just got a huge passion for marine conservation and scuba diving. So, you know, absolutely, absolutely love her. And obviously my uh, national director as well, Jill. Jill. So hi, Jill. Um, So, yeah, it was great to see the girls um, and to promote, obviously, Miss Scuba and uh, Depth Therapy Charity as well. We saw saw the guys there um, doing some phenomenal work, really, um, with the veterans. So, so, yeah. Once again, we'll put a link to to the Depth Therapy Charity. So if you do come across our podcast, uh, there'll be a link to that and, uh, and how you can also support Depth Therapy, which is a really good charity. Um, You know, do... To encourage you to look at them, look at their website, and um, all the good work that they're doing for veterans and mm. what have you, and how you know, and how diving is a really good way of uh, helping veterans, you know, you know recover. So mm. that'd be good. Um, also, we spoke to some holiday firms, didn't we? So hello yeah, to you guys yeah. if you're listening to us. Um, it's interesting. Um, some people from Germany who had come over, haven't they? Yeah. So holidays in Thailand. Yeah, also <laughs> oh, Thailand. Thailand. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely lovely. Yeah. yeah, and there was a pool there, so people were having tri dives. Yeah. yeah, at the show. This is yeah. really good that yeah. you can do that. You can get yeah. some 
practical. Yeah. Although I kind of admit, I, I I didn't get in the pool. They did try and coax me. This yeah, would I have been a challenge, Becky. And in all honesty, I think if 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 it had happened, I probably would have gone and done it. So but next I didn't year, have a pool. I didn't have any like towel. I didn't have a swimsuit swimsuit or anything. So you know, next year when we go God. to the dive show, oh, oh, oh my word, oh, we need to have a challenge with oh, Becky to do it, oh, the oh, go oh, dive and show oh, in that oh, lovely oh, cool water. Well, I'd like to like to thank um, Anya from uh, Mulberry um, Divers in West Sussex because um, she let us try on some of the um, the mermaid fins, yes. the mono fins that, that they've got. Um, it's a new feature that they're, I'd like to they're try, starting. But they didn't have anyone in my size. Wasn't they really did. Your colour, wasn't it? Didn't. They did. Really? Yeah, you, oh, we could have got that. you into a merman. It was just obviously we did that out of water. Is there such a thing? A yes. merman? Oh yeah. You know what? I I will get hold of my Do friend's we have to details. Call them no, I'm going to call him a merman. They're mermaids. Right. But he's a merman. Okay. He makes synthetic tails. They are amazing. Right. Okay. But anyway, it's all about monofin. So it's, it's still a type of diving. It's like free. It's free diving. I'm not sure I've got the legs for it. But anyway, uh, you don't yeah. hang. On. You don't need the legs for it. You need the fin for it. <laughs> You're like great in a tight skirt fin. When Could you write bright pink though? Yeah. It'd have yeah. to be fuchsia pink. Maybe with a bit of glitter in in there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I think you'd look fetching. Anyway, that's enough, <laughs> enough of those dreams. We Let's get back to the podcast if people are listening. So uh, apart from that, so we, we saw Fourth Element as well with their range of equipment. So that was really good. And the British, the guys at the British Divers Marine Life Rescue. Yes. That's good catching up with them as well. And so, hugging uh, their um, hello inflatables. inflatables. <laughs> so. Okay, that does not sound good. Um, they had, um, obviously, all of the, the dummies that they have for the they whales, the yeah. dolphins, dolphins to, the to rescue. Yeah. They're so just hello to Matt, inflatable. Jim and Craig. Yeah, yeah. hi guys. guys. And they've inspired me to register as a marine yeah. mammal yeah, medic. You're, you're so I'm doing that right. at the Also, end. check out our social media. We've got photos of Ian and Gemma wearing seal masks. Oh, yeah. Oh. That yeah. was good fun. That was, that was good fun. So, um, obviously, Obviously, it's is this visor thing. It's um, virtual reality where up it shows you up close and personal to seals and seals being rescued and then set yeah, free. Really good charity. So um, we'll put a link on to that as well. Mm. As you say, you you're yeah. booked to do it yeah. when do you say end of May. End of May. Yeah. End of and May. Um, hopefully, I should be putting on to that as well to do it at the same time. Yeah, should be fun. So That'd be really good. That'd be good. To have us all involved in something like that. Mm-hmm. So I think. Uh, with a further ado, I think we've kind of covered everything for today. So once again, thank you very much for listening. I know we've probably gone off to- topic a little bit in places, yeah, as but always. it's been fun. <laughs> but you know, um, if in if in doubt, please do contact us and with any questions and stuff. And don't forget to cha- challenge Becky. Don't forget to ask the, for the dive master episode. questions. Absolutely. So all, without further ado. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye. Yes, thank you very much and goodbye. Goodbye, see you next episode.